So let's meet down on the mat. I want you to be um, lying completely down first with your legs straight. And sometimes when we work on the core, we get a little organized just around one section. Most people think of the core as, you know, this sort of waist to lower pelvis area. But honestly, think about everything from your pelvic floor, base of your pelvis, to the collarbones. So that, look what that includes. It includes a large part of your body, right? Um, and so we have these weak links within the structure. Uh, it doesn't mean anything's wrong. It's just we might notice that there's a weak link. And why do we choose or uh, focus so much on this middle part? It's because there's very little bony structure to support you. The only thing that's there is the base of your spine. There's no other bony structure. So we work with the muscle there. But there's a lot more going on. Okay, so while you're lying there statically, I want you to go back to connecting with the breathing, just like we were doing before. And I want you to feel the belly rise and fall. But now what I want you to do is deliberately, without changing any structure, draw the belly in as we do on the exhale. And I want you to notice what that does to your lower back. So when you inhale, notice what it does to your lower back, and then exhale and notice what it does to your lower back. Typically what happens is when you're inhaling and you feel that expansion, the lower back can move slightly inward towards your body and it can feel a little bit like compression. And when you exhale and draw the belly back, the spine moves very slightly backward, in this case toward the floor, and it can feel a little bit more like expansion okay so just notice that's happening in your body and then i want you to draw your awareness to your uh, pelvic floor and as you exhale and draw the belly in i want you to activate the pelvic floor also and then when you release it uh, and let go you're going to let go of the pelvic floor so these these actions are asking a deeper more integrated um, pattern of behavior for stability in this lower core area. Some of you know that I've had pelvic floor surgery, I've had pelvic floor issues. Um, that is a weak link with me and it had to do with lots and lots of things as I was growing up and running and weight training and horseback riding and all the things, having children. And then when I went through menopause, all the tissues got weaker because my hormonal structure changed. And then I had to really focus and pay attention. So I've learned over my journey that pelvic floor strength and health is directly related to lower core strength and health. So that's why I'm bringing it in. Now keep going and bring your awareness to your ribs. And you might even wanna lay your hands on your lower ribs so you get a sensation of this. But as you're exhaling and you're drawing the pelvic floor in and the lower belly in, can you also bring the rib cage in? And it's really easy when you try to do that to push your lower back ribs into the floor more, try not to do that. It feels a little bit like a corset that's releasing as you inhale and then it's tightening from your rib cage to your pelvic floor as you exhale. Some people are really good in their lower core activation and not their upper core, so meaning the rib cage, tend, rib cage tends to be a little disconnected. And then some people are the opposite. And I'm, I'm asking you to do this simple movement pattern, this simple awareness first, because I'm going to bring it into everything else we do. Okay. Last round, easy exhale, really focusing on the ribs, the lower belly and the pelvic floor, and then let it all go. Okay. Bend your knees, bring your knees to your chest, give them a little hug. 
gently rock side to side if you like. Take a moment. Okay, now why did I have you do all that? Because when you're integrated, when you have that bracing or the corset kind of idea going on, you can move your limbs around in a very safe way because everything is connected and, and organized, right? It's when we let go of them that we tend to have the problem. So we're gonna start to move around just a little bit with this idea. So bend your knees, put your feet on the floor, and rock and roll a couple of times, lower back to the floor, lower back off the floor, pelvic rocking, we call this. Super easy, nothing hard. And then find what we're gonna call your neutral. So there's usually a little space behind your lower back, there's usually some pretty heavy action going on in your upper back and shoulders. Pelvis is neutral, okay? Now, C, can you draw in the pelvic floor, connect into that lower belly and the ribs, and still breathe? That's the trick. Holding that, and my tendency is to put my thumbs on my rib cage and my other fingers on my hip bones, to help this idea of connection. I want you to come up on your tippy toes. Right away, you're gonna notice, wow, that just got harder. Did you change your awareness? And then lift one knee up towards the ceiling. And then we're gonna just tap it down and lift the other one. So what I want you to notice is, are these pelvic points or your rib cage moving? And are you able to continue to breathe without uh, letting go of this bracing? It's hard. <clears throat> Next level up is to alternate them. So one goes up and one goes down. Light tap with your toe. You're not putting any weight on your foot. You continue to hold the rib cage and the lower core and pelvic floor. Don't forget. And we're just breathing. Noticing if the simple movement pattern can happen for you. And then take a break, put your feet on the floor, rest. The other thing that happens is when you press your rib cage, if you try to push your rib cage too hard into the floor, not or to your body, not only do you lose your neutral, but your shoulders come up. And that's never a good thing. So it's subtle. All right, so we're gonna do another pattern. Hands go to the sky. Shoulders connect to the back body. Engage your belly, pelvic floor, and ribs, and then come up on your tippy toes. And then this time, bring both knees up. So we start here. A little bit harder when you add the arms. So we're gonna tap your right foot and move your left hand back, and then come back to center, and tap your left foot and move your right hand back. Now, the smaller your movement, the easier it is to control. So if you're not real strong and you're having a hard time, don't move your arms all the way back to the floor and keep your feet close to your bottom. If you're a little bit stronger and you can manage it, you can take your arms further back and you can take your foot farther away from your bottom on the floor. And that longer lever, creates more dynamic tension into your core that makes you work a little harder, that's all. So are you still engaged? Pelvic floor, lower core, upper core. One more time. Good, feet on the floor, rest. How many of you were holding your breath while you were doing that? <laughs> so I like to use that kind of thing as a warm up. It helps to bring real good alignment um, cue into my body. And it doesn't have to be hard to be effective. I learned that a long time ago from a physical therapist friend of mine. <clears throat> this next one we're gonna do is actually a little bit of a somatic movement. And what I'd like you to do, especially if you know you have neck stuff, is to grab a blanket and put it under your head. Now, if you don't have neck stuff, you don't need it. Okay. This is to actually start the beginning of um, 
um, movement patterns, noticing what you're doing in your body when you actually start to move around. So the inhale here is going to open the belly more and arch the back off the floor on purpose. And then the exhale is going to draw down like we just were doing, but this time pressure lower back into the floor. So do that first. And what I want you to notice is whether you're pushing into your feet. Do not push into your feet. Keep your bottom relaxed. We're going to need our bottom later, but right now we're just using these lower core muscles. Think pelvic floor and lower core mostly. You might even notice when you do this, your rib cage gets involved because they're all connected. Okay, so we're going to just expand onto this. Walk your feet together, squeeze your legs together. And one of the things you should know is that your core actually energetically starts at the arch of your feet, moves up through your legs into your pelvis. So squeezing the legs can activate that a little bit. Now as you inhale, arch the back, exhale, press, squeeze the legs and see if you can float the legs in. Inhale, let the feet land and open the back. Exhale, float. See how this feels in your body. This is like a little mini D core reverse crunch. We used to call them in the days of fitness. I don't know what they call them now. But can you feel, we'll do one more, that when you contract your abdomen, your legs just kind of float up, that's what you're after. Okay, leave your feet on the floor. And now take your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers, and bring your elbows towards. So I want you to think about when you're down on the floor, your lower back is arched, your belly is open, and your elbows are wide. And when you exhale and you draw your back to the floor, your elbows are going to curl in and you're going to lift your head up. And then when you inhale, you release, arch the lower back, open the elbows. Exhale, press the lower back in with your abs, pull the elbows and lift up. Keep going. I want you to get the sense of everything moving on the breathing. And you could squeeze your legs together as you lift your head and shoulders. And if you've got the blanket underneath your head, it helps those people that have neck issues not move in a deep, uh, longer range of motion. Now, keep going. See what it feels like to float the legs up with you. Lower back down. Exhale, float. The elbows should never go towards the knees. They're just coming up towards the ceiling. Your natural curl of your upper torso comes with you. Squeeze the legs, exhale. Inhale. One more time. Now you should be starting to feel rest. You should have started to feel a little bit of warmth happening, maybe a little bit of muscle fatigue, if you were doing it correctly. Let your legs stretch all the way out. If you have a blanket under your head, move it. And lay in Shavasana for a second and just check in. If you like that kind of movement because it helps you to isolate what you're doing, without a lot of extraneous other things going around. That's a really great little warm up. It's safe for pretty much everybody unless you have some kind of spinal issue going on and you know you shouldn't do that kind of movement. But otherwise, it's not a difficult or strenuous thing to do. Okay, so let's come up onto tabletop now. And to get the continued idea, of core activation, I want you to use a block between your legs here. You can use the skinny one or you can use the wider one. I'm gonna use the skinny one just because we're in table. And you're gonna come into tabletop. Spread your fingers. 
And just notice if you have your legs together and you're squeezing the block when they're when it's in the neutral or smaller position, your knees are going to be a little closer together. So if that doesn't feel good, switch it. All right. Now, when you're inhaling, same thing. Your toes are turned under, your belly is releasing, your heart and your eyes are up, and your shoulders are on your back. Flip your feet flat, squeeze the block, exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly. Now push with your arms to get the upper back engaged. And then inhale, release. And then exhale, squeeze the block, pelvic floor, lower belly, ribs. Push with the arms, get the shoulders going. And we'll do three more like that. Just continuing to move in and out of that. Now it's movement. Now it's dynamic. It's slow, but it's happening. Feel when you squeeze the block, how it can activate more of those deeper muscles. We're working with the uh, uh, multifidus of the spine. We're working with the uh, transverse abdominis in the deep, deep core body, along with starting to pull out these bigger muscles like the rectus abdominis and the lats and the like. Good, do one more round. And can you feel how it helps you to open and activate your shoulder girdle? Remember I told you the shoulders are part of the, part of the journey. When you finish that last round, stop in the middle here, squeeze the block, toes turned under, lift your sitting bones and move back into downward facing dog. Now even here, squeezing the block, can you find your pelvic floor, lower belly, and then a lot of people that are super flexible will drop their rib cage toward the floor. I want you to draw the rib cage in a little bit like you were doing before. See if you can keep the front line of your body integrated while you expand the back body. Most of us will let go of the front body because we don't really need it in this pose. We have to activate it on purpose. Keep finding the pelvic floor, lower belly, ribs, shoulders. All right, slowly make your way back down onto the mat, kneeling. So if you need a blanket underneath your knees or your shins, please take it. We're going to stay up in this kind of position in the kneeling on your shins. Okay. So if you have two blocks, you can actually do this with two, but not everybody has two. If you have two, keep the block between your legs like you had it. Keep your feet flat on the floor and then hold the block, the other one out in front of you. So if you only have one block, please use the hand position. Squeezing the block between your leg if it's there, squeezing the block between your hands, you're gonna to start to lean backward. I don't want you to go so far where you can't maintain this neutral position. Keep squeezing the block as you come back up. Now rotate to your right. Keep squeezing the block if you have it. Come to center, rotate to your left. Come to center and then lean back. So there's the little drill, if you will. Keeping your lower half completely stable pelvic floor, lower belly, and then keeping the arms moving in this very controlled range of motion. One more round, leaning back, inhaling, squeezing the pelvic floor, lifting it up. There's so much more I could say about the pelvic floor. I've done tons of workshops on them. I might do one here and then lean back, now hold here. Press through your shins, lift your pelvic floor, belly. Ribs are not poking forward, they're integrated. Shoulders are on your back. Inhale, rise up, this time lift the arms. Can you keep the core body engaged here? Arms are up, rib cage is in, belly is engaged, pelvic floor is active. Squeeze the block, breathe. And then let it release. 
All righty, take the blocks away. Come back into this <clears throat> position, tabletop here, and then go back into downward facing dog. Taking a moment and then find your way up to standing. Forward bend here, just release. Now, even here, can you just engage the pelvic floor and the lower belly slightly? When you do that, your lower back feels stable and it will actually help you with your range of motion and of course your movement. Inhale, come halfway up, looking towards the front of your mat, keep your spine long, come all the way to standing. Arms up over your head, palms together, and then exhale. Alrighty. This next little segment is done standing. If any of you saw a video that I did a while back on standing dynamic core work, that's what this little next segment is. So while we're standing in Tadasana, I want you to have your feet underneath you and can you look down, lift your toes and see how that activates your inner arches and lower your toes and see how your inner arches kind of get softer or more relaxed to the floor. So lifting your toes to activate the inner arches and then squeeze the imaginary block and right away you're gonna get the glutes involved now because you're standing, that's all right. Pelvic floor engaged, lower belly engaged, rib cage area engaged. So thinking about these four points being pretty active here holding in this neutral position. And then as you inhale, bring your arms up, keep all of that. If you can interlace your fingers together, squeeze your hands and lift up. And now imagine your arms coming to the center of your head, squeezing through the midline to get the upper body involved. Okay, taking a breath here. Just notice how hard or easy this might be. And then release, okay. Going back to that breath again with this movement of pelvic rocking. So as you exhale, the belly is gonna draw in and you're gonna feel a little bit of lengthening happening in your lower back, not a tuck. Do not do that motion. So inhale, you'll feel a lengthening or an opening. Exhaling, you're gonna feel a dropping in or filling up back here. Inhale, exhale. It's just like when we were standing or lying down. Inhale and exhale. All right, if you have something that you can put your hand on just as a balance piece, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, your hands are just gonna stay relaxed for a minute. You're gonna take a breath, exhale, shift your weight and lift one knee. Inhale, put it down, feel the belly open. Exhale, pull everything in, lift the other knee. And inhale. And exhale. So if you've got your hand on a wall or something, it just takes that balance piece out and you can really focus on what you're doing. Now pick this up and inhale and inhale. Remember the belly and the activation of the core raises the legs, just like when we were lying down. And you might notice that as we go, I'm gonna turn so you can see, my back starts to get a little bit fuller as I bring my knees in. My rib cage wants to come down into this crunching kind of movement. So we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna ask you to reach your arms and pull down. And reach the arms and pull down. And reach the arms and pull down. And now what we're doing is this middle piece is expanding and contracting and the arms and the legs are coming along for the ride. If you were in fitness back in the 80s, 90s, even in the 2000s, this was a common action. Reach up and curl, reach up. And I'm not trying to drop my head, I'm just focusing on this middle body. One more on each side, exhale, whoops. And exhale, and then pause. So standing dynamic movement 
were you able to keep all the pieces going? It can be harder. So taking your feet a little bit wider, just so that you have a little bit more of an open stance, we're gonna do the same thing on a diagonal. <clears throat> so the arms are gonna come up over your head in a like X shape. Think about your body being in like a diagonal X shape. And then as you exhale, do the same thing. You're gonna pull in, you're gonna feel your glutes fire, pelvic floor, lower belly, all of this fires. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, fire. Inhale, open it up. Now this one, you need to go probably a little bit more dynamic or you'll lose your balance. So the next time, pick up your one knee and bring it to your opposite elbow. And then up and opposite elbow. And up and opposite elbow. So you're shifting your weight side to side, reaching each time straight leg, straight arms. Keep going, pelvic floor, lower belly, ribs. Remember the legs and the arms just come around for the ride. It's, you're not moving from out here with your hands and feet. You're moving from the inside out. So super important to remember that that breath and that deep internal action that we started with is key to everything else we do. So you do two more on each side. Remember, it's not this. Do, 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 do. We used to do this years ago. Nope, nope, it's not that. <laughs> I see some of you doing that. Go ahead and rest. Your body memory came right back to that. How many people were in aerobics classes and we did all that a million times, right? And it, we created this body habit, but it was pretty unconscious. So I'm asking you to act a little bit more consciously when we do these movement patterns. We're gonna do one more, and this one might be the feel the weirdest, it's a lateral movement now. So same work, you engage, we'll do one side at a time. So put your right hand on your hip, put your left hand in the air. We're gonna contract and open this side, right? So I want you to inhale and open it up a little. And then I want you to exhale and bring your elbow and your knee out to the side to touch. Inhale, open it, exhale, touch. Inhale, open it, exhale, touch. Remember pelvic floor, lower belly, and in this case, it's gonna be your left rib engaging. <clears throat> you can always put your hand on something for balance because it's more important actually to get the action in the body than it is for balance. Keep working on the pieces from the inside out. The more active we get, the more body parts we move around, the harder it gets. Notice how my body is rolling from one side to the other. See, I got this action going on. One more, and then pause. All right. You should feel something over here. Let's try the other side, reach up. And as you inhale, reach over a little bit, coming from that extension, and then exhale, knee to elbow, whoop. See, I lost my balance. Inhale, inhale. And so your feet come closer together. Notice how my feet are more neutral. My body comes over, so I'm in a lateral crescent pose here in between. And then I'm trying to take the knee and the elbow out to the side to isolate and move the lateral muscles of the body, the deep lateral muscles along the spine, and the hips where it got involved. One more time, one more, and then pause. Nice job. Take a breath. Now, just to keep this idea going, you know, we just did dynamic balance, but let's do a static balance pose. Let's do an easy one. Let's do tree pose. <clears throat> so remember that everything starts from the midline of your inner arches. So look down at your feet, lift your toes, feel the inner arches, engage the legs. So the minute you lift your toes, you can usually feel the leg muscles engage and then this idea of squeezing in. 
Now you need to put your right foot toes down because you need your toes for balance, right? Put your weight into your right foot, engage the pelvic floor, lower belly, upper back, uh, upper core, and then just pick this leg up and put it somewhere. Shin above the knee, or if you can go all the way up, go all the way up. Now, if you can go all the way up like I am, I want you to push your foot and your thigh into each other, and that's like squeezing a block. Arms can be open or you can hold, tap something. Pelvic floor is engaged, lower belly is in, rib cage is connected, arms are doing whatever. Notice how much you're using your toes. Notice how the inner arch is lifting away from the floor. Breathing. Taking that time here. So this is static, this is no movement. We're focusing on those deep inner pieces. And then as you exhale, release your hand, release your leg. <clears throat> Take a moment in between, and then look down again, toes up, engage the inner arches to the inner thighs, feel the legs engage, then place down your left toes and float up your right leg and turn it open and place your foot somewhere. It doesn't mean that you're better if you can get your foot up, but if you can, you have the ability to squeeze into the midline. Otherwise, it's a little harder. Keep thinking about the inner arch, the inner thigh, the lower pelvis, engaging rib cage, and then arms. You can see on me that this side's a little harder, so I have to work a little bit more focused to keep these pieces going. And for me, my pelvic floor is the first thing to let go. As soon as I engage it, I feel steadier. But then it lets go again, and then I have to engage it because I'm not really strong there. All right, one more breath. I hope you're smiling like I am if you're wobbling like I am, and then release and come down. <laughs> okay, shake it out a little bit. Come to the top of your mat. And we're gonna move back into downward facing dog. So in your own way, reach up, float down, and then move back to downward facing dog pose. <clears throat> now we don't have the block this time, so I really want you to think about what you're doing. Keep the front of your body engaged. Think about that corset idea, or a bracing idea, or a hugging idea. Okay, so we're gonna move into a plank pose, which we all know. <clears throat> so come on in, hands are under the shoulders, feet are lined up. This is what we're gonna call our sort of normal plank pose. And you know, a lot of people can't do this one because of their wrists. And so then I always tell them to, you know, there's no reason you can't do it, just come down on your forearms. Now push on purpose, in your hands and round, feel the expansion or the spreading of your shoulder blades. Can you feel that? Keep that going, lift your belly and imagine your hip points and your rib points coming in more, creating a little bit of a rounded action in your body. Don't drop your head, keep your eyes about where your hands are. Keep pushing, keep lifting. Ah, anybody find this hard? Exhale, release down onto your knees a minute. When you do it that way, you engage everything and make yourself stay there, which is a lot harder. You don't realize how much you're letting go. Okay. So now we're gonna take this into what we're gonna call the X. I used to call this the splat plank. So you're coming back into your neutral one. And I'm progressing this, right? So if this feels hard enough, then stay here. Keep your pelvic points, hip points, rib cage points moving in and out. Push with your arms. And then maybe take your hands on a di diagonal, one hand forward. And then take your feet on a diagonal to the outside edges of your mat. So this would be considered more of a wide-legged, wide-armed X plank. 
Now, if you're stronger and you can, your hands can go even more forward. So I've got my feet on the corners of my mat and the hands on the corners of my mat. And now there's, I have to engage the muscles underneath me or I'm gonna fall down. So quads, pretend to squeeze the block, pelvic floor, lower belly, upper body, shoulders. Push with your arms, pull in with your belly, push with your legs. If you're here with me, this is a lot of work. Breathe, keep thinking about your weakest points and focus there. And then slowly and carefully bring yourself back in. So you're back into your whatever normal plank and then let your knees rest. Rest back onto your hips for a minute, turn your hands over. So if you like to strengthen your body and you know you need to, and planks are easy and boring, do the X plank. And it brings in another layer of difficulty and another deeper layer of um, activation through the shoulder girdle and the pelvis, and then the deeper layers of the core. All righty. Lucky for you, we're running out of time. All right, so come down onto your belly. Let your head rest on your abdomen, on your abdomen. Let your head, head rest on your hands. And just feel the breath moving in and out through the belly against the floor. A great way to work on um, upper torso strength is to work against gravity with intention. And so we're gonna try that a couple of times here. So laying all the way down here, slide your arms right along your rib cage. Your fingers are pointing upward and your forehead's on the floor. You're gonna keep your knees down and what I'd like you to do is draw the belly up. Can you find your pelvic floor? Shoulders roll to the back of your body, keeping engagement. That's gonna want you to push your rib cage into the mat. I'm gonna ask you to pull your rib cage and your belly away from the mat. So the front of your body is moving up and into your body and the back of your body, your lats and your shoulder girdle are moving in and towards the front. So they match, right? On your one, two, three, I want you to push and come up as a straight line. If you can't do that, you might have a little weakness in your upper arms, but you also might have, a, a, a what's the word I'm looking for? A, a disconnect between your abs and your lats and your shoulders. So it's your upper core body. From here, lift your lower belly, keep your shoulders engaged and lower down as a unit. We're gonna do one more like that. Shoulders, make your shoulders and your upper shoulder girdle move in and toward the midline of your body. And then lift your belly and your rib cage to move in toward the midline of your body and then push. If you've always wanted to do a push up, this is a great way to learn. Lower back down. Good. Now, take your arms out in front of you. And if you are a little bit tight in your shoulders, take your arms wider, but mostly if you can, arms out in front of you. And then activate this idea of inner thighs, pelvic floor, lower belly, ribs, and then see if you can float your right foot off the floor and your left arm off the floor. And notice if you're pushing on this right hand or this left foot, I don't want you to push it. Lower down, activate again, and lift the left leg and the right arm. And then notice if you're leaning over or pushing on the opposite arm and leg. It's really important. It's just like when you lay down, go ahead and rest. It's like you're laying on your back and you're keeping yourself organized. This is the same thing on your belly. Now we're gonna do an active motion called swimming. And so what I want you to do is keep the intention of pelvic floor, you'll feel your glutes fire, lower belly, ribs, keep all that organized. And then you're gonna lift your left leg and your right arm 
And then at the same time, you're going to switch and switch and switch. And you just keep going back and forth like you were swimming. Now, while we do this, there's no weight on your arms and legs. And your tendency is going to be to push your belly into the floor. I want you to pull your belly into your body. Keep your glutes engaged, keep your back engaged, keep your shoulders engaged, pelvic floor engaged while we move. This is no joke too. Different way. Go ahead and rest. Take a breather. It's so important that you don't cheat. So if it feels like it's impossible, then you do it really slowly one arm, one leg, and then really keep activating the deep inner core muscles rather than, oh, I'm just going to do it and get through it. Not the best idea. <clears throat> All right. Come back up away from the floor. Remember the activation in your core before you push up. Coming into downward facing dog. <clears throat> Some of you have done this with me before, and if you have a block and can grab it, you could take your block between your upper thighs. We're going to do what's called <clears throat> the beast. I've heard this woman called it that, and I thought it was great language. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a knee bend with your legs moving more to the floor and your sitting bones moving back. So it's kind of in between child's pose and dog pose here. And if you've got the block, squeeze it. Notice how your pelvic floor is wide open. I want you to see if you can find it. <laughs> Lower belly. From here, push yourself into plank pose. And then from here, move back to that bent legged pose. So you're going forward and back. And forward and back. And forward and back. And you keep moving. Don't worry about the block if it falls out. Don't worry about it if you don't have it. But keep thinking about the pelvic floor, the lower belly, and the upper belly around the rib cage, staying active. And again, this is the hard part. The more we activate, I'm sorry, the more we move around, the more parts, the more difficulty, the easier it is to let go of this key piece. All right, go ahead and rest. Take a breather. And then we're gonna end up on our back here. <clears throat> so on your way, just take a moment. You might wanna lay your legs all the way down. We're not done yet, but I do want you to just take a moment. Moving into something a little bit more um, familiar, we'll say that, but it's at a higher level of work. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple different ideas so that you don't overwork, right? Because that's never a good thing. Go back to the blanket under your head if you used it the first time. And I'm doing it with you just because I want to show you what that does is it lifts your head about an inch or so off the floor, so you don't have to pick up this heavy head from the floor and bring it up. It'll feel really hard if you do that, especially if your neck flexors, the front of your neck, are weak and tight. And that's about 95% of the population. Okay. And then have a block somewhere near you so that you can grab it. <clears throat> Stretch your legs all the way down. And before we start moving, pelvic floor, inner thighs, lower belly, and rib cage, shrink wrap around yourself. If you're doing that and your lower back pushes to the floor, you're doing it incorrectly. You're trying to hug everything to the midline without any body parts really moving. And this is a great practice just to do on its own. All right, from here, we're going to lift the right leg straight up. And you are well, welcome to keep your head on the floor if you think it's not going to work for you. But if you can pick your head up, 
bring your arms up towards your foot. Like you're trying to touch your toes. We did this in one of my classes, I think last week. Leg down, left leg down, reach up, find your pelvic floor, lower belly. Upper abdomen's easy here if you're up because it's already engaged. Now when you come down, reach back behind you, feel the belly full, exhale, engage everything first, then lift your leg, then reach with your arms. Can you do that? It's like when we were standing. Inhale, disengage slightly. Exhale, engage and lift. Inhale, engage and then lift. One more each side. Exhale. And I always say this when we do core work in my classes, if your neck is tired, it's just weak. Doesn't mean anything's wrong with it and go ahead and rest for a minute. It also could mean that you disengage your core and your body senses it and your head is heavy. It's like a weight that you're picking up. And so it's like, oh my God, my neck has to do so much work. Make it do it from your core instead. Another level up, if you like. We're gonna hold the block with two hands and we're gonna inhale and come back behind us. Same leg pattern and upper body pattern. We're going to lift the leg, lift the arms, and then pass the block behind you. Grab it and lower back down. Exhale up, pass the block behind you. Grab it and come back down. So it's much more active, dynamic. Straight legs, please. Reach the leg longer when you come down. You can do this without lifting your head. You might not be able to pass it easily. You're gonna do as much work, it's just not quite as hard. So decide which, which you need. Keep breathing, remember engage your muscles first before you lift. Last one, and then pause. Bend your knees. Let your legs go side to side. Now we've done very little twisting. So we're gonna do one more thing here with twisting. And this is just a release. I do want you to use the block. I do want you to put it in the second side between your middle thighs. And then if you've got a blanket underneath you, please take it away. You're not going to lift your head anymore. And let your arms be down below your shoulders, palms down. This is going to be your anchor. Shoulder girdle, head, arms. Lift your legs up so that they're parallel to your own knee and hip are parallel with each other. Shin is parallel to the floor. And then can you squeeze the block? Try not to touch your feet. Keep your feet lined up with your knees. Squeeze the block, lift the pelvic floor, lower belly ribs. Good, take a breath. Exhale, roll all the way to your right side, almost to the floor. Keep your legs squeezing the block. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, go the other way. Squeeze the block, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Pelvic floor, lower belly. Inhale. And you're going back and forth here. And you're noticing your desire to twist all the way to the floor versus your engagement. The engagement is much more important. Now, if you're a little bit stronger, your arms can come up. If you had a block, you could hold a second block like we did earlier. And as your knees go to one side, take your arms the other way. And now you're gonna notice, whoop, can't go as far. Inhale. Knees go one way, arms go the other. If you're holding the block, that's a really nice action. If you're not, you're holding your hands together. Keep your arms fairly straight. Don't worry about how far you go. This is control. Keep squeezing pelvic floor, lower belly, ribs, shoulders around your back. All right, one more time each direction. These are rotational muscles. 
important for daily function. And then rest. Release your feet, release your blocks. Take a moment and put your feet together. Let your knees come apart and let space come between your inner thighs. Now, in pelvic floor work, we know that contracting the pelvic floor, which is commonly known as Kegels, is strengthening to the pelvic floor, and that's important. But we also know that people are very tight to begin with in the pelvic floor. And so breathing and releasing it is just as important. And that's true with all musculature. It, if it's always in contraction, it's weak. So we want to soften it. So this will be the part to soften. So the legs are open. If you need the blocks underneath your thighs for support, please do that. Arms are relaxed here. And as you inhale, I want you to, on purpose, really feel the opening of the belly, lower back, pelvic floor. Now exhale, don't contract, just soften. So finding that breath that works for you. And on purpose, can you go deep inside? And as you're inhaling, feel the tissues expanding from deep inside. Super easy to feel in your belly or in your chest. Um, it's a lot harder to feel it like pelvic floor up through the vaginal wall, along the length of the spine. When we're inhaling and softening the tissues, it's a yin-like action where we bring blood flow after all the contracting and all the efforting. We're gonna bring blood flow and resiliency to the tissues. After your next exhale, if you want to shift position to go into the Shavasana, please do. Allow your breath to regulate into a nice, easy flow. Feel the weight of your body. And the resiliency in the midline of your body.
begin to take a deeper breath. And let the breath alive and awaken your body. Allowing yourself to slowly come back. Stretching and moving in any way that helps you do so. When you feel ready, please bend your knees. <clears throat> Roll to your right side. And bring yourself back up to sitting. Once you're seated, especially if you can come back to the place you were in the very beginning, just notice any sensations around the torso of your body. There might be a deeper connection or what I might call an integration when you wake up these deep muscles inside the main part of your body called the core. You might notice the breath is deeper because the breath and the core musculature are all deeply connected. And when our core is engaged and we feel deeply connected and integrated, it can lead to feeling a little safer, a little bit more stable in the earth. Um, more like a deeper knowing of yourself. And I always like to remind people as, you know, as much as our physical body is related to our physical actions and daily ac activities. It's also deeply connected to the state of our well being, state of our emotions, state of our mental health. All integrated. So let's bring the hands together, thumbs touch the breastbone, fingers splay apart, heels of the hands press. Elbows enliven, heart opens, bowing the head to the practice for you showing up for you in your busy, busy world. May your light always shine brightly and may we always see the light in each other. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. As always, it's a challenge to fit stuff that I want to get into into an hour. So we are a little bit longer. I kind of predicted that. <laughs> so I'm hoping if there was just one little thing that you took away today, keep integrating that. It was, it was totally profound. I, oh, uh, profound. <laughs> Terrific. No, I'm serious. I'm serious because uh, with MS, I have balance issues and I have one weak leg. And uh -huh. I, that my balance, when I came, came from that core, um, it, it really helped. And so I'm just going to keep working on that. It was really was profound. I mean that. So thank oh, you. So thank much. you so much. I'm glad that worked for you. Awesome. Yeah, and like for Akara, you know, that kind of work for you moving forward, really, really great. Yeah, I, I can't get my legs to lay down straight because of my sacrum right now, but it's, it helped. All of it helped. It felt really good. Yeah, and so just do it with bent legs. That's all. Yeah, perfect. Awesome, guys. The next specialty class I'm going to do is...
<laughs> I think it's the 19th. I think I'll have to double check my own schedule, but I'm going to do what, what I'm calling a Shakti flow. So anybody who used to take classes with me at my own Shakti studio, where I used to do the functional fitness, it's going to be more like that. It's more, much more dynamic, um, integrating strength and movement at the same time. Um, I don't think I'm going to ask you to, to use weights, but if you have them, especially if they're light, like two or three pounds, you could bring them into the room and maybe we'll grab them. So that's going to be the next one. All right. You guys have a great day. Thanks. Thank you, Sue. Thanks. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Did I hear well. Corey's voice? Did he, Was he here with you? What? It, was Corey's voice in there? Nope, just the puppy. Okay. okay. I thought I heard a man's <laughs> voice. And I was like, wait, I didn't think he was there. <laughs> All right. Take care. See you Tuesday. Bye.